In this video, I just want to introduce the Sims-Weinstein monofilaments for testing sensation. Uh, sometimes this is called the touch pressure threshold test, uh, but the actual name of the assessment is called the Sims-Weinstein monofilaments. Uh, in this test, uh, I'm not going to go through all of the testing procedures that you would normally do with this. Uh, those are in your readings, uh, and you can gain that on your own. I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time in the video regurgitating your readings, but I did want to give you just a visual to go along with the readings so that you can understand these. Um, the patient is positioned at a table with palm up. The fingers need to be supported, um, preferably on a big old lump of theraputty like we have here. And what you're going to do is you're going to position their fingertips and the thumb um, so that the tips of the fingers and their thumb are actually kind of embedded in the putty, and the putty kind of holds them in place, more or less. All right, so let me bring that up around. All right, very good. Okay, and that keeps the patient from twitching or pushing up against the monofilaments, which would uh, greatly alter the test if, um, because it would increase the velocity with which the filament uh, contacted the skin. Now the monofilaments uh, consist of a, a little um, plastic bar and then at the end of the bar is this uh, little filament. Uh, it's kind of like a fishing line and what you're going to do with that is you're going to um, uh, apply that filament to their skin just until it bends, just until it bends. As soon as you have a little bend, you hold it there for a second and a half and then you release. All right. Once you have a bend, you don't want to apply a lot more bend because then you actually decrease the pressure applied by the filament. You want just enough uh, pressure so that it just bends and then you let go. There are um, several monofilaments uh, in the kits that we have here. There are five monofilaments uh, and those five mono monofilaments um, correspond to each threshold of the testing from diminished light touch to diminished protective sensation and so on. Um, <coughs> Normally, when you would be doing this, you would be using something to occlude vision. So what I usually do is I instruct my uh, patient to close their eyes and keep their eyes closed, but then I also use uh, uh, something to occlude their vision, like a, a file folder or something like that. It's important that you don't actually touch them uh, on their wrist with this thing that you're occluding their vision. If you're touching them on their wrist or forearm with this, uh, that is going to alter the test. It'll um, be very distracting to the patient that's trying to feel the, uh, the monofilaments. So just to kind of show you, um, you would then on one or the other side of the finger apply the, the monofilament, and I'm not doing this standardized because I would be sitting across from him, I'd have his vision included, but just to show you how this works. Um, and then you just apply it till it bends, and then uh, for a second and a half, and then you release. The patient is instructed to let you know when they feel anything uh, and then also instructed to let you know uh, what finger uh, they're feeling it in. There are a variety of the monofilaments. Some of them are very thin and apply very little pressure. Some of them are very thick and apply a lot more pressure. Uh, the filaments uh, 1.65 through 4.08 uh, are applied three times. Uh, that is, you take them and you apply it till it bends, hold it for a second and a half, you release, you apply it till it bends again, hold it for a second and a half, and then release, apply it again for a second and a half, and then release. You do three successive applications in the same place all in a row. If they can feel it during any of those, um, that means that uh, they have that level of sensation. All right. With the thicker filaments, uh, that is the ones above 4.08, um, the filament is simply applied uh, once, hold for a second and a half, and then release. And the patient has to feel it and tell you where they felt it uh, during that time. When you're doing this, you really want to avoid extraneous movements. Uh, you want to avoid anything like writing something down between every application or putting your um, 
your filaments back, uh, that would kind of cue the patient that the test is somehow changing or that they got it or that they didn't get it. Um, you kind of want to keep your patient in the dark with this one. So you uh, apply these more or less um, uh, in random order on the finger so they don't know what finger is going to be next. Um, I pause occasionally because otherwise I've had it where the patient will tell me, yep, I feel that, yep, I feel that, and I'm not even doing anything. So um, you need to not get into a rhythm, not get into a pattern while you're doing these. You apply the filaments from the smallest to the largest. As soon as they feel, for example, the smallest filament, that part that you're testing is done. They felt that you don't have to test anything larger after that for that particular region. Uh, you're going to test each digital nerve, so both sides of each fingertip. Um, separately, so you would have for each hand then, if you're doing just the um, distal phalanx or the fingertips and the thumb tips, you'd come up with 10 measurements, um, one for each digital nerve in each digit. Uh, and that's pretty much how that works. Uh, so that's the Sims Weinstein monofilaments. Again, there is much more information about how the test is uh, done in your readings, but I just wanted to give you a visual here to uh, provide some context for that. We will also be going over these uh, in class as well.